Gateway Church and to all of our Facebook and YouTube partners. We are so glad that you are here to worship with us today because this is the day that the Lord has indeed made and we are going to rejoice and be glad in it. In a moment, Reverend McDonald along with the praise team is going to usher us right into the presence of an almighty God. I want you to set your hearts and minds attuned to worship. Be ready to accept and explore the worship experience with us. Before you do that, I want you to be a virtual evangelist. I want you to share, start a watch party, let people know that Gateway Church Ministries are on. So right now, the praise team is going to come, and we're going to worship with them. And right after the praise team come and we get into that form of worship, I'll be right back with the Word of God. There's a specific word just for you. God bless you. Good morning, family. We want to bless the name of the Lord. God, we thank you that you're with us. God, we thank you that you've given us access to you. And where there's access to you, there's everything that we need. I'm trading my sorrows. I'm trading my shame. I'm laying them down for the joy of the Lord. Come on, say, help me say, I'm trading. I'm trading my sickness. Trading my pain, I'm trading my pain. I'm laying them down. I'm laying them down. The joy. joy of the Lord. Come on, lift up a yes to the Father. Say yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, yes, Lord. Come on. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, yes, Lord. Say yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, yes, Lord. Amen. Come on, let's go. I'm trading my soul. I'm trading my soul. I'm trading my shape. I'm trading my shape. I'm laying them down. I'm laying them down for the joy of the Lord. See, I'm trading my sickness. I'm trading my sickness. I'm trading my I'm trading my shame. I'm trading my shame. 
Thank you, God, for such a wonderful time in your presence. And dear Father, today I pray over your people as we enter into your word. Father, we pray that your word continue to be a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our pathway. As we enter into your word, dear God, I pray that you would till the soil of the minds of the people that are hearing your word. That you would till that soil, O oh Father, that as I begin to plant your word seed into their minds, the Holy Spirit would get it and drive it deep into their souls. And Father, it will demand change. It will demand transformation. And we'll be the better for it. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen and amen. If you have your Bibles, and I hope you do, turn with me back to the book of Deuteronomy chapter 1. We're going to continue in the series I began last week entitled Unfreezing Your Faith. This is part two. Last week, as we began the new series, we began with Moses reminding the Israelites that their own bad conduct and lack of faith was responsible for their tedious wandering in the wilderness. Moses challenges Israel to understand the advantages of obedience. According to God's plan, they must now go forward. But before they can, they are faced with the challenge to change. Now I'm going to advise you this morning and put you on warning. Change is always a challenge. And it is even more difficult when it is imposed on us as a result of our frozen faith. Frozen faith leaves us in a state of uselessness. Moses shows Israel uh, how near they were to the promised land of Canaan. And Moses, while reminding Israel of the consequences of their disobedient conduct, he also declares to them that they must change the atmosphere of their minds and their hearts. And they must own the land that God has predetermined and declared to be their inheritance. But in order to do that, they must change. They must change the posture of their faith. Read with me our foundational text because I think it bears rereading to understand the frozen faith dilemma of Israel and to thoroughly understand Moses' ministry objective, which is to break the illusionary spell of defeat that has consumed Israel at this point. Verse 22. And every one of you came near to me and said, Let us send men before us, and let them search out the land for us, and bring back word to us of the way by which we should go up, and of the cities in which we shall come. The plan pleased me well, says Moses. So I took twelve of your men, one man from each tribe, and they departed and went up into the mountains, and came to the valley of Ishkol. And spied it out. They also took some of the fruit of the land in their hands and brought it down to us. And they brought back word to us, saying, It is a good land which the Lord our God is giving us. Nevertheless, you would not go up, but you rebelled against the command of the Lord your God. And you complained in your tents and said, Because the Lord hates us. He has brought us out of the land of Egypt to deliver us into the hands of the Amorites to destroy us. Where can we go up? Our brethren have discouraged our hearts, saying, The people are greater and taller than we. The cities are great and fortified up to heaven. Moreover, we have seen the sons of Anakim there. Then I said to you, Do not be terrified or afraid of them. The Lord your God who goes before you, he will fight for you according to all he did for you in Egypt before your eyes. And in the wilderness where you saw how the Lord your God carried you as a man carries his own son. In all the way that you went until you came to this place. Today, I want to speak to you from this month's topic, unfreezing your faith. But more specifically from the subtopic, the challenge of change. But I want to begin with our first power thought from last week's Sunday, which states, faith, not fear, should be our default reaction to threats in life. 
My dear friend, faith is the Christian posture when Satan, the thief, when he comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. This should be our Christian posture because it helps to maintain our hope and to keep our eyes on our future. Today I want to echo Moses' declaration to Israel concerning threats to your hopes and your future. I want to speak it to your life. Do not be terrified or afraid of any threats that come against you. Unfreeze your faith because the Lord your God, he is fighting for you. Now unfreezing your faith is an important component to your forward movement. Like Moses, today I too am declaring and encouraging you that although you may not be able to see what God can see for you in 2021, you must unfreeze your faith and ready yourself to face your future. Now, from last week, I must reiterate the three not knowings. I shared last week that we have to get comfortable with uh, not knowing some things. We have to get comfortable with, number one, not knowing everything. And secondly, we have to get comfortable with not knowing how God is going to accomplish that which he wants to do and needs done inside of our life. And thirdly, we must get comfortable not knowing when God is going to do it. Get comfortable with those three not knowings, and it's going to help you to deal with the anxiety that comes along with not knowing. It's also going to help you deal with the psychological effects of crisis intimidation. Last week, I began sharing one of three necessary changes needed for our next season. In review, I'm going to review the very first one very briefly. The first change necessary for our next season is that we need to reevaluate our future outlook within God's plan. We looked at it in Exodus chapter 3 and in Deuteronomy chapter 7. I won't read them because I want to get right into today's message. But I will reiterate this. When you reevaluate your outlook or your future outlook within God's plan, when you do this, you are really reevaluating your potential outcome according to God's agenda. God's agenda, hear me well, is a predetermined plan with a predetermined outcome for your life. And let me talk a little bit about that predetermined outcome according to God's predetermined plan. Unfreezing your faith allows us to trust God for his predetermined outcomes. I hope you can agree with that based on last week's teaching. God-sized tasks place a demand on us. And God-sized tasks challenges us to change. It challenges us to unfreeze our faith. It challenges us that we can trust God no matter what and to know that God uh, is with us. Now today, as we continue, I want to finish up the last two of the three necessary changes needed for our next season. The second change that is necessary is uh, we must reset our spiritual awareness or resetting our spiritual awareness. Last week, I also challenged you to snap out of it when you're mesmerized by sudden life crisis. Snap out of fear. Snap out of the limited expectations that you placed upon yourself. Because God wants to direct your path. He wants to direct my path. Because God needs our undivided attention. The, the, the declaration of last week is what I'm declaring to you today. Snap out of it. Because God needs your undivided attention. But I also want to tell you today as I begin part two. Don't ignore satanic influences in your life. Be aware of how Satan is using situations feelings and people to disqualify you from your deliverance and to disqualify you from what God wants to release inside of your life. Don't ignore the influence of the spirit of fear. Don't ignore the crutch of accepted limited expectations. Satan 
He had these things inside of your life, and there is a reason. They are deceitful devices uh, that are used by Satan to diminish your faith and to extinguish your hope. The Apostle Paul gives us a warning concerning what I call the principle of ignoring. It is tucked away in 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 11. And it reads like this. Lest Satan should take advantage of us. What? Don't ignore what Satan is doing. Don't ignore his devices, Paul is saying. Lest Satan should take advantage of us. That scripture goes on to read, For we are not ignorant of his devices. You see, the illusionary principle of ignoring exists because people are inclined to believe that what they ignore will eventually dissipate or go away. Let me ask you a question. Have you ever tried to ignore a creditor? Have you ever tried to ignore a bill that was due? Have you ever tried to ignore a health challenge? They don't go away. The issue just gets worse. But when people acknowledge and confront the negative effects of their behavior, their habits, and their conditions, they have now taken the most critical steps toward change. They have to change their behavior, and it will change and shift the direction of the outcome. Now I need you to write this next power thought down. Power thought number two. Because it is key to the challenge of necessary change. And it goes like this. You can't change what you ignore. And what you ignore, you will empower. I'm going to say it again. You can't change what you ignore. And what you ignore, you empower. The way we defeat Satan's grip on our life today is that we must be aware of the enemy's weapons and the enemy's tactics. Because our spiritual life depends upon it. If we ignore Satan's devices against our life, we will empower their effects inside of our life. This is the reason why the Bible constantly tells us, I would not have you ignorant concerning certain things. Once we become aware of Satan's devices, then and only then can we make the necessary changes. Because where God is taking you and I, we've not been there before. And what is required from us is developmental flexibility, the necessary adjustments critical for our first start to new heights. Which leads us to the second necessary change for the season that God is going to take you in. And it is reset your spiritual awareness reset your spiritual awareness this reset is dependent upon knowing and trusting that god will reveal compromise and weaken areas inside of your spiritual structure the device satan uses to control his evil outcomes inside of your life are the weakened, compromised areas uh, of your life. In essence, at the point of awareness, you will allow God to help you deal with uh, the external persons, the external things, and the internal ungodly perceptions that nurture corruption and faithlessness inside of your life. We've got to become more spiritually aware. The Apostle Paul labeled these things in 2 Corinthians chapter 10. Verses 4 through 6, he calls them strongholds. Verse 4 says, for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. That's the first level of awareness. We're not fighting flesh and blood. When you try to fight spiritual things with the natural, you will always be defeated. So Paul makes us aware that the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they are mighty in God for pulling down strongholds, casting down arguments, and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ and being ready to punish all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. Dear friend, this morning, strongholds, don't ignore them. 
Don't ignore them. I'm going to say it again. Don't ignore them. Let me say this again. The power thought. You can't change what you ignore. And what you ignore, you will empower. Don't ignore your strongholds. Because when you do, you empower the strongholds inside of your life. And now you must understand the mission behind the strongholds. So why does Satan allow these strongholds? Why does Satan plant these strongholds in our life? Well, number one, he plants them because he wants to paralyze our obedience toward God. Look with me in Numbers chapter 14, verse 1 through 4. Verse 1 reads, So all the congregation lifted up their voices and cried, and the people wept. They wept that night, and all the children of Israel complained against Moses and Aaron, and the whole congregation said to them, if only we had died in the land of Egypt, or if only we had died in this wilderness, why has the Lord brought us up to this land to fall by the sword, that our wives and children should be victims? Would it, be be would it not be better for us to return to Egypt? So they said to one another, let us select a leader and return to Egypt. Oh my God, you have to understand, this is what strongholds do to your life. It paralyzes your obedience to where God is taking you. It paralyzes your obedience to what God is requiring of you. What does it take for you to get to what God has promised you? Those strongholds in your life make you disobedient to what it takes to get to where God wants and what he wants for your life. I'm here to tell you today, we've got to be more spiritually aware of Satan's tactics and weapons and strongholds in our life because we cannot change what we ignore. Galatians 5. Verse 1, and then we're going to go to verse 7 through 9. Paul writes, he says, Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty by which Christ has made us free, and do not be entangled again with a yoke of bondage. You've been delivered. You've become aware. God has delivered you for what you become aware of. So don't be entangled again in those strongholds and in those areas of bondage. Verse 79 says, you ran well, but who hindered you from obeying the truth? That this persuasion does not come from him who calls you. Look at this. A little leaven leavens the whole lump. Oh my God, you've got to understand, you can't let one single small stronghold slip by your awareness. Because the Bible says, a little leaven will leaven the whole lump. If you leave a seed, it's going to produce some fruit. So as you become more aware of what God is requiring of you, as you become more aware of the strategic tactics and weapons and strongholds of Satan, as you become aware of them, you are required and you are challenged by God to change those things. Now, Satan also brings those strongholds in our life to hinder God's favor inside of your life. Deuteronomy chapter 1 Verse 21, look at what it says. Look, the Lord your God has set the land before you. Oh my God. Let me stop right there. In essence, stop all the complaining. Stop paying more attention to the strongholds inside of your life without changing them. If you're going to pay attention to those strongholds, if you're going to pay attention to those things that's debilitating you, change them. But by no means let them influence your decision as God is trying to move you forward. This is what Moses was saying. Listen, stop the madness. Shut up. Snap out of it. Moses was saying, look, the Lord your God has set the land before you. What he has promised you is right there. He says, go up and possess it. As the Lord God of your fathers has spoken to you, do not fear and do not be discouraged. And that is the challenge that I'm going to give you this morning. Go up and possess everything that God has determined belongs to you. And if you don't know what that is, it is time for you to get entire into a season of prayer and fasting so that you will know the will of God for your life. 
Now, the objective of, of resetting your spiritual awareness is this. It resuscitates your obedience. It breathes life back into your obedience. Your obedience has been sidelined. Your obedience has been dead to God because of all of the strongholds that you may have ignored in the past. So right now, you need to learn and you need to embrace the fact that you've got to reset your awareness because your spiritual awareness will resuscitate your obedience to God. You've got to bring every stronghold and every argument that's inside of your mind and anything that exalts itself against the knowledge of Christ, you've got to bring it into the obedience of the Lord your God. Which leads us to the third and the final necessary change, which is refueling our faith arsenal and our faith attitude. Refueling your faith arsenal and your faith attitude. Oh, wow. Listen, in the book of Numbers, chapter 13, as we begin to read verse 30 and 31, notice Caleb's attempt to refuel Israel's faith so that they can move toward what God has declared as their inheritance. Read with me, verse 30. Then Caleb quieted the people before Moses and said, let us go up at once and take possession, for we are well able to overcome it. Let me stop right there. Listen, Caleb was seeing things in the spiritual, in the supernatural. He wasn't looking at what Israel didn't have. He didn't look at what Israel did not possess. He wasn't looking at what weapons they did not possess. He was looking at the God who brought them from Egypt. He was looking at the God who carried them across the Red Sea. He was looking at the potential of the God that destroyed Pharaoh and all of his army. He was looking at the God that took care of them and provided for them inside of the wilderness. That's the reason why Caleb's testimony was this, this. It was not about the people. He was saying, but God is able, or oh, you better get this, we can go up at once. We are well able because of the Lord our God to overcome any and every challenge that the new land possessed for us. We can possess it. And then he goes on in verse 31, and the scripture reads, but the men who had gone up with him said, watch this, two different testimonies, two different outcomes, and it was based on their spiritual awareness. On the one hand, Caleb was aware of God and all he could do. On the other hand, there were some other spies that went up who was not spiritually aware, who was not emotionally and spiritually connected to God. And here's what they said. We are not able to go up against the people, for they are stronger than we. Oh, my God. I'm here to challenge you today. Not in your own self. Not by flesh and blood. Not by the natural attributes that you have that you're going to be a conqueror. But it's because of the power of God that's inside of you that you're able to do above all that you can think or ask God to do. God will do it through you. Listen to me this morning. Caleb was attempting to restore their spiritual soundness. Spiritual soundness means having quality judgment. It means having robust courage. It means stability and confident reliability, not on yourself, but on the God that is going to help you to conquer and to possess. Listen, 2021 is going to cause you to have some many challenges. And they're going to be mountain-sized challenges. Don't fear them because of what you lack as a person. You move forward with robust courage, with stability, with quality judgment, because the God that you serve will empower you to conquer any and everything. He said that you are more than a conqueror, which means you have won the fight before you even begin the battle. Oh my God, listen, you need to understand this, that God has already determined your outcome based on your obedience. And if you obey God, God has promised that you will come out of this thing a victor and not a victim. Today I want to stir up your spiritual soundness 
like the Apostle Paul did when he spoke the words of encouragement in 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 6 and 7. Paul said, Therefore, I remind you to stir up the gift of God which is in you through the laying on of my hands. Verse 7 is very key. He says, For God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. So if you have a fear, God did not give it to you. If you feel like you don't have any power, that is not from God. If you feel like you don't have the ca capacity to love, that is not of God. If you don't feel like you have a sound mind, if you are anxiety ridden, if you are fear struck, that is not God. Because according to Paul, for God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. In the name of Jesus, I decree it and I declare it over your life that if you are in God, you've got the power. If you are of God, you've got the love you need. If you are of God, you've got the sound mind. All you've got to do is walk by faith and not by sight. Walk by faith and not by feelings. I think that's a good place right there for a clap offering and an amen spiritual soundness requires adjustments in two major areas of faith number one you got to ready your faith arsenals your faith arsenal is your spiritual weaponry or and your spiritual armor in Zechariah chapter 4, verse 6, the writer says, This is the word of the Lord to Zerubbabel, not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, says uh, the Lord of hosts. And then in Ephesians, Paul come back and he writes in chapter 6, verse 10 and 11, Paul states, Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. And it says, put on the whole armor of God, not of flesh, but put on the whole armor of God, not of emotions, but put on the whole armor of God, not of doubt, but put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand with against the wiles of the devil. Why? Because you can't fight a spiritual war with natural resources. I'm going to say it again. You can't fight a spiritual war with natural resources. Go with me the verse 12 and 13. Listen at this. Paul continues to write. He says, for we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand. Oh my God, you need to understand. You have to fight the spiritual fight of faith with the spiritual armor of God. You have to fight the spiritual fight of faith with the spiritual weapons of God. The moment you get out of the spirit into the natural and into the flesh, you are automatically dooming yourself for failure. But if you want to go with courageous resolution into any battle, take on the spiritual armor and and the spiritual weapons of an almighty God and your outcome is guaranteed you will be more than a conqueror through Christ Jesus can you say amen and it's not just enough to have a spiritual faith arsenal you got to have and ready yourself with a faith attitude so you got to have a certain attitude behind the weapon <laughs> you got to know, you got to be confident in the weapon that you, of your choice, the weapon that you choose. This is the prerequisite for greatness. In Deuteronomy chapter 7, verse 17 to 21, oh, listen at this. Along with your faith arsenal, you need to have a faith attitude. I'm going to say it again. Along with your faith arsenal, you need to have a faith attitude, a faith attitude of greatness. Listen, God requires greatness, nothing less. In verse 17, Moses elevate Israel's faith attitude. If you should say in your hearts, 
says Moses. These nations are greater than I. How can I dispossess them? You shall not be afraid of them. Somebody say faith attitude. But you shall remember well what the Lord your God did to Pharaoh and to all Egypt. The great trials which your eyes saw and the signs and the wonders and the mighty hand and the outstretched arm by which the Lord your God brought you out. So shall the Lord your God do to all these people of whom you are afraid. Moreover, the Lord your God will send the hornet among them until those who are left who hide themselves from you, they, they too will be destroyed. You shall not, please read verse 21 very slowly, you shall not be terrified of them. Attitude. For the Lord your God, the great and awesome God, he is among you. It takes faith attitude to go along with your faith arsenal in order for you to have a complete victory. You've got to have faith in the fact that whatever weapons God gives you, you're going to be a conqueror. And then your attitude of conquering need to come forward. As you go into battle, you need to go in there with faith weapons and with a faith attitude. Can somebody give God a praise offering right here today? You've got to change your attitude and you've got to change your weaponry in order to be a conqueror, which leads to our final power thought. And it says this. Once you become fearless, life becomes limitless. Please hear this. Once you become fearless, your life becomes limitless. It's not enough to just have the faith weapons if you don't have the attitude to go behind it. Your attitude of greatness, your attitude of courage, your attitude of being resolute in God, knowing that you are the redeemed of God, knowing that you are the chosen of God. I'm going to pray with you right now that God will touch your life, that God will move upon your faith today that God will help you with the challenge of change so that you can make the necessary changes in your life so that as God begin to lead you to the doors that he wants to open for you, you'll walk confidently to the door and then confidently through the door. You're going to have to deal with some of those things that's, that's trying to take your spiritual awareness away from God. You're going to have to deal with those areas of your life that you've been ignoring, hoping that they would just go away and dissipate. Those sin areas, those areas of struggle, they're not going away. It is time for you now to be aware of them and to confront them. I'm going to say it again. It's time for you to be aware of them and to confront them. Because here's the thing. I said it before and I'm going to say it again inside our power thought. You can't change what you ignore and what you ignore you empower stop empowering the areas of struggle in your life because God wants to bring a bright future your way I want to pray for you right now that God would do great things for you that God will bless you I want to pray for the areas of struggle inside of your life so if you're with someone right now just grab them by the hand I want you to pray with me if you're by yourself I want you to just place your hand over your heart and I want you to focus on God because I'm going to pray that God bring deliverance. This is your season to unfreeze your faith. This is your season to change, to, to, to take the challenge of change seriously. This is your time to lay aside every weight and every sin that so easily beset you. And it's time to get in the race and to run with patience. Our Father, God, I pray with the people that's listening and watching today. We do not pray for more faith. Father, my prayer rather is for us to have the courage to unfreeze and to exercise the measure of faith that we already have. Because if we do, God, we know that you're going to increase our faith level. 
Oh my God, make us more like Moses and Joshua and like Caleb who were willing to believe in spite of the doubts of others around them. They were willing to believe you, Lord, in spite of the challenges that seem impossible that they knew that they would conquer through you. We come under your authority. We come under your power. And we accept your claim upon our life. We declare your authority and power over every single area of our life. Therefore, God, we are prayerfully proclaiming deliverance, dear God, in our own lives and in the lives of others around us, our friends, for those that are suffering, our neighbors, dear God, this country and the entire world. God, and we are crying out today, this morning. We are, we are crying out with our heart to you. In faith, as we unfreeze our faith, we are crying out, dear God, help us, deliver us, inspire us, empower us. Father, help us to believe that you will deliver us from our challenges. God, help us to believe that things in our life are getting better. Help us, dear Father, to rise above the things in life that's causing us pain. That's causing us mental anguish. David wrote inside his Psalms, dear Father, he said, They cried out to the Lord in their trouble. And he says, And you delivered them from their distress. God, right where we are, whatever we're facing, whatever the stresses and challenges that we are confronted with today, God, we are crying out from within them that you would raise us up, dear God, above all of the challenges and meet the needs. Give us the faith. Give us the patience to embrace your process and the purpose for our lives. This we pray in that strong name, Jesus. Amen, amen, and amen. Oh my God, if you believe that God has touched your situation, if you've, listen, if you've declared that you're going to unfreeze your faith, if you're declared that you're ready to face the challenge of change, God has already done it for you. I'm going to decree that with you this morning. God has already done it for you. I want you to look to somebody that's in your home and view that by yourself, just speaking into the atmosphere. I decree and I declare that it is done according to God's will. Whatever my needs are, it is done. Whatever doors I need open, it is done. Whatever I need healing, wherever, wherever in my life that I need healing, it is done. I thank you for release. I thank you for manifestation. And God, we're going to wait for it to manifest in our life in Jesus' name. And now for those who are not believers, but you've tuned in and you're tired of the cycle of failure, dysfunction, anger, fear, you're just tired of doing the same things over and over every year and getting the same results and you're not moving forward. Let me tell you why. Because you're not operating in your true purpose. And you can't operate in true purpose and you don't qualify for the covenant blessings that come with your purpose unless you're in covenant with God. And that requires a relationship. A relationship with God that comes only through Jesus Christ. Just in case you don't know, he sent his son to die for all of our sins. He paid it once and for all. And the Lord Jesus and God the Father and the Holy Spirit in agreement with this process of him coming and dying says all you have to do now is accept, confess your sins, and believe. And so now if you're ready, this could be the first day of the rest of your life. It could change the trajectory of your life if you just pray this prayer and believe it inside of your heart and begin your faith walk by reading your Bible, 
connecting with faithful others, I guarantee you God's purpose is going to unfold in your life and all of the resources will follow. Pray this prayer. Heavenly Father, I'm a sinner in need of a Savior. And I come today and I lay all of my sins, trespasses, faults, weaknesses, my failures down at your feet today. Father, I believe that Jesus was your son, that he came and he died. He took all of our sins to the cross. And now all we have to do is accept him in our heart as we confess our sins. And so today, as I've confessed my sins, I've laid them on your altar. I pray that you cast them into the sea of forgiveness to remember them no more. And Lord Jesus, I invite you to come into my heart and into my life to stay. Thank you. Thank you for dying for me. Heavenly Father, thank you for sending your son because you loved your creation so much. And because of that, I confess, I am now saved. I am converted. I am your child and you are my father. In that strong name, Jesus, I say thank you and amen. God bless you. Thank you so very much for joining us today in our time of worship in song and worship in the word. I pray that you've been blessed. And if you've been sensitive, God has touched your heart. I've found out that in messages that are preached or taught, that it touches different people in different ways because there are different areas of need. And I pray that your area of need have been met today according to the word of God. I decree it on your life. Right now, I'd like to give you an opportunity to sow into this ministry, Gateway Church. We're doing some wonderful things as we continue to reach out to our community, as we continue to preach and teach and to serve the people of God and even the world who are unbelievers with evangelistic efforts. We thank you, Gateway and partners, for sowing your tithes, your offerings, and your faith promises. You've been so faithful even during the pandemic. We thank you. And right now, all of you who've been watching who are not Gateway members and you may not be Gateway partners, if this message has blessed you and I hope you have received from God, please sow a seed. We're going to give you some ways that you can sow into this ministry. It's good ground. It's the best ground you can sow into. And so now I want to pray that God will touch your heart to give. I want to pray that as you prepare to give, that God will give you the confidence to know that he is going to touch your family. He's going to touch your finances. He's going to touch the outcome of your life. Father, I thank you right now for the souls of the seed today, those who will be obedient to give. God, it's not a debt that we owe, but it's a seed that we are sowing now for our future. And because we are sowing today, dear God, according to your word, we ask you that you would rebuke the devourer for your namesake, that you will be glorified. God, we pray that you will restrain him and restrict him. Bring increase into our life. Expand our territories. Open doors in careers. Open doors in education. Open doors inside family relationships. Because we sowed a seed, we can ask you. And now, Father, I pray for every seed that will be sown. And I pray for Gateway Church that you would touch those seeds. Multiply it to do the work that you've called it to do. For the harvest is truly plentiful. And the work is great. Father, thank you for those that have sown and thank you for blessing the offerings. Thank you for the expansion of the kingdom. Thank you for using us. In Jesus' precious name, amen and amen. God bless you. Thank you for joining us once again this Sunday for another time in worship and another time in the word. Listen, as we always say, Gateway Church, Facebook, YouTube partners and friends. You are the most awesome people in all of the world. Lady Kat and I, we love you dearly and there is nothing you can do about it. God bless you. Have an absolutely incredible week. And we're going to say this, listen to this, come back here next week, same time, same place, and be ready to worship. We love you. God bless you. Amen. We pray you were blessed by this worship experience at Gateway Church. Make sure you share this word with your family and friends. If you'd like to sow into our ministry financially, there are four ways you can give. First, through text giving. Just text the amount using the dollar sign to 855-905-0862 and follow the prompts. You will receive a confirmation text thanking you for your generous giving. 
The second way is through our Gateway Church website. That's www.mygatewaychurchfl.org. Just select the Give Online tab and follow the prompts to your giving instructions. We also offer Scan to Give using the camera on your phone. Just scan the QR code to be directed to our Gateway Church website. Lastly, you can always mail in your donations, tithes, and offerings to Gateway Church, 2130 Northwest 26th Street, Fort Lauderdale, Florida, 33311. Once again, we thank you for your continued generosity to Gateway Church. Until next time, remember, share this word, stay connected by following us on Facebook, and subscribing to our YouTube channel at Gateway Church FL. May God continue to bless you and keep you. Until our next digital gathering.